All right, so this is a PS4 I got, and when I press the power, I hear something clicking in there, and then nothing. So, so yeah, I'll have to figure out this one, but I need to steal the fan out of this one to for another PS4 that I'm working on, so. So we will figure out this one when I finish with the other one. Okay, so based on that popping noise that we heard when we tried to cut this thing on, it would pop and it would shut right back down. And this was like days later, so I don't exactly remember what I said or, or whatever, but anyhow. Um, so what I did was I ordered a 5-pin power supply because it seems to me the power supplies aren't supposed to pop like that. So I'm thinking maybe it's the power supply. I checked the, the, uh, I checked the, I checked the 12 volt input on the motherboard and it was not shorted. So there's no reason that I can think of that, that, uh, that power supply should pop like that unless maybe it can't handle whatever load is being applied to that so anyhow I had to order a new power supply just so I could verify if the power supply was in fact bad and that's where we're at and we're gonna go ahead and test it to see if the power supply was the issue so here goes oh I don't have it plugged in my apologies all right so everything's uh, plugged in so we are going to press power, and it did not turn off. Let's switch over to camera and see if it's going to boot. Okay, so it booted up all the way. So we'll press the, uh, I'll have to take that dude's name out of there. So let's, uh... Log into it, uh, create a user, whatever, skip that. Yep, reach the game just fine. Yeah, so the power supply was bad, so uh, we need to fix the power supply. So let me get this thing all shut down and then I will work on fixing the power supply. All right, so I got the power supply taken out of the case and I thought that I might need to try to figure out a little bit of how these things kind of work. So so I am going to, we're gonna start this off with a discussion on how I think it works and then we'll try to use how I think it works to actually troubleshoot and figure out what the problem is or at least where the problem's at so so what we have we have voltage that comes into our AC input right here so that when that voltage comes in it then goes through these this fuse it goes to FL1 uh, FL2 FL3 I'm guessing this right here is some kind of protection because it's tied to both sides of the plug. Um, but anyhow, then it, 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 it goes through this uh, full wave bridge rectifier. So once it gets out of the full wave bridge rectifier, it then begins to charge these two, these big monster capacitors right here. And as you can see, they're 450 volts, 100 microfarad, and I think this is 150 microfarad. But these have to charge to a specific DC voltage. And so that, that voltage that it's supposed to charge to is, um, is more than you have coming in on the AC side. And the reason why it's more is because of just how multimeters measure AC voltage. So when a multimeter measures voltage it measures voltage in, in what's known as root mean square and root mean square is 0 0.707 
times your peak voltage. And they get that, so this would be your peak voltage all the way to the top. If this were, if you know, if this continued on down, you would have your line in the center. And this is zero volts, obviously. So this is peak. This is a peak. And together, these would make peak to peak voltage, right? But RMS is 0 0.707 times your peak voltage. And so when we measure with a multimeter, we get a, in, a, in North America, we get 120 volts AC. You know, if you're in Europe or you're like when we were in Iraq, they all ran off of 240 volts at 50 hertz, whereas we run off of 120 volts at, at 60 hertz. So when you measure that voltage with a multimeter, you're actually measuring RMS. And RMS is essentially, they just basically, and, and I, don't, I don't know exactly how they did it, but they basically took a peak value at, at different points and they carve it up and then they figure out what the average voltage is along this entire parabola, you know? And so the, I guess the, the math guys figured out that it's about 0 0.707 of peak. That's the average uh, RMS voltage that you would have. So... Really, the voltage that we're going to measure here, the DC voltage, is really going to be the peak voltage or, or the RMS voltage, which in my case would be 120 volts, uh, roughly. If I measured it with my, my multimeter, RMS voltage, we can, we can figure it out, um, is, let's see, it is... 120.8 volts. So then that means the way I figure out what DC voltage I should have here is by taking 120 volts and multiplying it by 1.414, right? And, and when you study electronics, you'll see the square root of two come up a lot. And 1.414 is in fact the square root of two if you actually calculate, calculate the uh, square root. Um, you could also take 120 volts and divide it by um, divide it by 0 0.707 and, and come to the same voltage. But anyhow, so when we go to measure the voltage across these big caps, we should be reading uh, whatever that value is. I don't, I don't know. Let me break out the calculator here. It should be like 169, 170 volts, something like that. So yeah, so 120 times 1.414 is 169.68 volts, right? So that's the DC voltage that we should measure here. Um, but then, and then that 169 volts DC is then used along this top part of the power supply to generate your your five volt standby, right? But then the other thing that happens in these power supplies is when I when I turn the console on, it then causes this voltage that I feel at these capacitors to increase to around 400 volts, and that's called power factor correction. And you need that 400 volts DC there so that along this path right here, you can generate 12 volts with the ability to produce up to 16 amps of current. So when you initially plug it in, you should only be reading your 120 volts times the 1.414 or 169 volts DC. And then when you actually, um, when you actually power on the console, this voltage would then drop, jump up to you. 400 volts around 400 and something volts and that's all done uh, by the power factor correction circuit so so if i were troubleshooting this and the problem we were having is the console would attempt to power on and then it would pop and then it would turn off and then i couldn't do anything i could press the power button as many times as i want it and it wouldn't do it wouldn't do anything so i'd have to unplug it and then plug it back in. So those are the symptoms with this power supply. 
So now it's just a matter of figuring out, um, number one, I'm pretty sure I'm getting my 169 volts of these capacitors, but does that voltage jump up to 400 volts when I bring in the enable 12 volt signal into my into my uh, power connector? So that's what we have to figure out, and uh, and then hopefully that will help us uh, determine if the power factor correction circuit tree is bad, or if the or if it's something outside of the power factor correction circuit. I'm assuming it's probably going to be the power factor correction, but I won't know until I actually attempt, until I short the two pins here to cause the 12 volts to come on. And then once that, and then from there I can, uh, this is kind of dangerous though because I'm afraid something's going to arc and spark, you know. That's where we're at. That's my, the old TJ theory of operation on how I think this thing works based on reading and, and listening to other folks. Um, I went through and checked a lot of the zero ohm resistors on here and the fuses and they all seem to be good. So my assumption is, is this is failing under load and the load being when you turn the console on and the CPU has to boot and all of these, all of these things take place, that's when, the, that's when the power supply cuts out. So that is what we're going to attempt to figure out. So uh, the first step is going to be plug it in and see if I can measure 169 volts there, which I'm pretty sure I can. So, All right, so in preparation of uh, the testing of this power supply, I went ahead and when I was at AutoZone the other day, I bought this little switch and what the switch is going to do is I took two wires and I soldered them to, I think it's pins 1s and 5. It is the 5-volt uh, standby that you have to short to the AC-DC standby. When you short those two pins together, you get, um, that triggers the production of the 12 volts. So the first step in this uh, thing is we're going to take these uh, leads and we are going to connect them to the legs of these capacitors right here and then we're going to plug it in and we're going to attempt to measure uh, remember it should be 120 times 1.414 or the square root of 2 whatever however you want to look at it but it should be 169 volts so we're going to plug in our power and we're going to plug our leads into our multimeter like so and then we are going to turn it to volts DC and we are measuring 165.6 volts so that's good and we kind of knew that because we were getting the 5 volts we kind of know that all of this right here is good to go so now when I flip the switch shorting those two legs together that voltage should jump up to around 411 volts DC. And it jumps up to 330 volts DC. So that's not enough. It should, it should have a higher, it should be more voltage there than that. Um, but with that being said, let's now measure um, Let's take our leads off. Let's change over to our our actual probe leads on our multimeter. And let's probe in our 12 volt line and we're getting 11.88 volts. But when you when you actually have this in a, a PS4, it'll kick off. For example, if I were to turn this off, and I've kind of been doing this to to just make sure I did this in a logical way so that if anybody else ever wants to do this they can they can do the same thing you just have to be very very careful that you're not uh, putting yourself in danger um, so if I turn that off you hear the relay kick off if I turn this back on 
um, you hear the relay click. That's signifying that the relay has now turned on and it turned back off. I don't know where my other lead went. Oh, here it is. So now if we were to measure 12 volts again, um, we're getting nothing. Notice the voltage is going down. The voltage in the capacitors is discharging and it's causing the voltage here to discharge. So, so that's where we're at. Um, so now if we, if we change over to the, to the schematic of this, uh, of this device, and I hope I don't have to do this 47 times, but so let's talk about what we've proved on the schematic. This is where I bring my voltage in. My voltage has made it through F1, FL1, FL2, FL3, and it comes out as this HB, SB positive and HV positive. Um, so we know if we come down and look at the, the power factor correction circuit, we know this is responsible for the generation of uh, the voltage through um, L1 here to charge these capacitors up to 410 volts roughly that you see on the schematic here. So we know that this path is all working. Um, we know that obviously this chip is doing what it's supposed to because I am getting uh, power factor correction. Um, we know that this chip is being triggered by our PFC control signal which comes from uh, PFC control comes from right here. So we know that this chip is outputting this signal. We know that that signal is making it through all of these components to here because we know that we're getting 12 volts. So we know that IC32 is doing what it's supposed to do. We know that uh, we were getting our 12 volts regulated that you would measure at the, uh, at the port. I'll switch back over to show you what port I'm talking about. We know that, let me discharge these capacitors real quick. Let me unplug it first. I'm going to use my capacitor discharge device here. Okay, capacitors are discharged. So we can safely handle the device again. So we, we, the first thing I showed you was this path right here all the way up to the rectifier and the rectifier is producing 169 volts or 165 volts at these two capacitors right here. This is L1, it's an inductor. We know that when we turn the system on, we know that, um, we know that uh, the power factor correction circuit kicks in, passes through L1, uh, and then begins to charge these capacitors, but it's only charging them up to 336 volts DC rather than the 400 that's supposed to be there. Um, we know that we were getting 12 volts out of our connector here, which is the last thing we saw. Uh, so we know that all these capacitors are good. We know that our inductor or our transformer is taking the voltage that's being switched by these two MOSFETs um, but the, and those those two those two uh, MOSFETs are being they're being controlled by this chip right here. I see, uh, I think it's 32. This chip right here, it's controlling those two MOSFETs that we just looked at uh, right here. So when when this one's on, this one's off. When this one's on, this one's off. And so you essentially have a an alternating current that's being produced to this or being applied to this transformer and then that transformer is stepping that voltage down from 400 volts or whatever the voltage is on the input I don't actually know I suppose we could measure and, and figure it out um, so we know all of these things work 
We know the 5 volt side works. We know the 12 volt side works. We know that um, our power factor correction chip, which is this chip right here, we know it's it's at least trying to, to work. We know this chip's trying to work. We know that IC41 is working because IC41 tells this that, hey, power factor correction is now enabled, right? So you can start producing the 12 volts. So we know all those things work. So, but yet, if I were to put this under a load, um, it would still fail. Um, so, is there anything else about the schematic that we need to look at? Now, this is the transformer. We know all of these things are good. Now, I have tested, while trying to learn this power supply, I've tested all of these things. Um, so, I think it's like this thing half works and it half doesn't. There are no shorts on any of these uh, on any of these chips. When I go into diode mode and I go to each leg, I'm getting a reading. So the chips, aren't, the chips aren't shorted. I've checked and traced all of the components. We know that the feedback, uh, this opt, opto isolator right here, um, if you look on the schematic, the opto isolator is located down here somewhere. I can't remember exactly where. That's IC32. That's responsible for your 12 volts. Um, I can't remember where this opto isolator was at, or the one that the one for the 12 volts. I, I don't. Maybe there are more. I, I I don't quite understand. Okay, right here, right here. So notice we got our PSC control into this chip. We also, um, um, and that, that triggers this thing to, to begin to put out the 12 volts. Um, this opto isolator looks like it's for feedback. That's the only thing I could think of, you know, because it says you have 12 volts coming in. And if you figure out where 12 volts is at on the schematic, 12 volts is before, or it's after T2, it's right here and it's before the 12 volts regulated. So it's it's almost like that 12 volts is being sampled by this circuit right here. And then it goes, it, it's uh, applied to this voltage divider network. And so then it forward biases this, this opto isolator. And when that, when you forward bias that diode within that chip, it then begins to produce light. Once that light hits this optical transistor, uh, that transistor turns on and based upon how much voltage or how bright the light is and the brightness of the light is controlled by the voltage across this light emitting diode depending on how bright it is right here is going to depend or is going to determine how how much current this transistor allows to flow from collector to emitter or, or vice versa I suppose um, and then, so that's going to be felt into the operational in here. Um, and so then it tells IC32, okay, based on whatever reading you get there, you're going to change the, the duty cycle of, of these transformers to match accordingly so that you can, you can produce a, a regulated 12 volts. It, anyhow, I, th I think that's what that's for. I could be wrong, but in any event... So I think the next step, um, I think the next step that I'm going to take is I am going to um, plug this in, hope that it partially works, and then I'm just going to look for anything getting hot on the uh, on the circuit card here because it seems to all be working correctly. So perhaps there is a sh short on one of these small capacitors that and I'm not going to go capacitor by capacitor and check for shorts I'm not going to do that because I'm too lazy to do that to be honest so I'm just going to plug it in hope it works and then we'll look for um, we'll look for a short so let's plug this in very carefully making sure we don't touch uh, anything 
All right, hands free. So we will take our our cheapo uh, cheapo little thermal camera. All right, so right now I shouldn't have um, if I measure. PFC is not enabled currently, right? So the problem we're having is not with uh, the 5 volts. Um, so yeah, so we're getting 165 volts. So I'm going to check this for heat spots. Okay. Now I'm going to turn it on. All right, so it, it didn't click, so I know it's producing 12 volts. So I see something getting hot right there. What is that? Something in here is getting a little warm. Something here is getting warm. What is that? So that capacitor is getting warm. That capacitor should not be getting warm. So, so yeah, so something in here, that might be, that might be the shiny uh, copper, and then this, and then this capacitor right here, that's getting hot right there. So, let's go under the microscope, let's switch over to the microscope view. Let's take that capacitor and put a little alcohol on it and see if it is uh, going to evaporate something. So let's, uh, you see that? Yeah, so that's, uh, that capacitor is definitely shorted. All right, so. Go back to the overhead camera. Let's um let's unplug this. Let's discharge the let's discharge the capacitors. And I think it's this one. Maybe it's this one. Uh, where is it this one? So we're discharging the capacitor. All right, so we're safe to handle it. So now what we can do is turn our multimeter to resistance and we will ohm across this capacitor. doesn't show a short though could it be shorted when voltage is applied could it be breaking down all right let's uh let's try this let's try that thing was definitely getting hot man you saw it evaporate the uh so i've got voltage applied so let's zoom across it again Okay, so let's turn it on. So I've got one point, that thing's got a two volt yeah, you see it jumping around? I don't think it should be jumping around. Yeah, so I'm putting out the uh, 12 volts. So now let's turn it back off. And then let's zoom across it. See? 
See, now it's done. Now it will not turn back on. That is weird, man. That is quite strange. Okay, so let's um let's unplug this. Let's unplug this and let's see what that capacitor is. It is C19. C19. So let's go back to here and let's try to search for C19. So I found this is C19. So it is a 1000 picofarad. That would also be a 1 nanofarad. So it's a 1 nanofarad capacitor. So I'm going to remove it because it should, I, to me, none of the other capacitors are getting hot like that. So why is this one getting hot like that? So I'm going to remove it and see um, see what happens because, I mean, because when this is on, the resistance from pin 3 to pin 2 is very low. So current is going to, I'm assuming that's a current sense resistor, so it's the path for current flow is going to be through here and then up this way to L1. But if even when the and this is responsible what would this do? I don't quite understand. IC41 is going to drive the gate of this MOSFET. And if we drive the gate of that MOSFET that MOSFET would turn on and then turn off, I'm assuming. But if this is on, then, because obviously current's flowing through this, and it shouldn't be, it should be... Of course, the voltage was bouncing up and down across C19. It was bouncing up and down, or moving back and forth. Probably as IC41 switched this transistor on and off. But why is it getting hot like that? You know what? I'm going to remove it. I'm going to remove it. And then I'll, uh, I'll see what it does with no capacitor there. And we'll go from there. All right. Let's, um, let's take this capacitor and put it right here. And we are going to... Turn that off. Let's plug it in. First, let's let's flip it over because I want to measure with that that capacitor gone. I want to measure the uh, I want to measure the voltage. All right, so we have 164 volts. So we're going to cut it on. Uh, it still is not getting up to 400 volts. I turn it back off. I heard the relay click off. Yeah, and it's no longer working. So even if I measured the five volt rail, the five volt rail would be would be gone. For example, so if I came over here and measured, uh, where would I measure five volts? So I would have to pull this ground here. Yeah, I'm getting 0.6 and the voltage is going down. So it completely shuts down. It'll turn on, but when it turns off, it'll completely shut down. Well, I'm going to put it back together and put it back in the PS4 and see if it will boot the PS4. Maybe the I'll put that capacitor back on. Maybe the symptoms have changed me probing around or something. All right, so the power supply is back in. Let's see if it turns on. Is 
Yeah, see, it's failing under load, man. That's the issue. And it's failing under load because the PFC is not producing the 400 volts that it's supposed to. So something in the power factor correction circuit is not working correctly. And the only thing I can think of is the IC42 or whatever chip that is. So something in here we know it's getting this. This starts to produce power factor correction. Even with this gone. I gotta ponder this. If I had another one of these, I would just swap it out. Just to rule out the chip being faulty. But it's not like the chip is doing the heavy lifting, you know? This MOSFET's doing some heavy lifting because it's the thing being switched on and off that allows L1 to charge and then discharge. Because there has to be something in this right here that or there has to be something in addition to this to allow these capacitors to charge up to 400 volts. There should be like a capacitor and I don't think C32 is the capacitor. It's not big enough it doesn't seem. How do you go from 169 volts up to 400 volts? You would have, this would have to charge to like 200 volts and then when this switched on um, when this turned on the polarity of the DC or the voltage would change so if it was charging in this direction right this would be positive this would be negative but then when this turned on and allowed current to flow then the 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 uh, L1 would discharge and it would discharge in the opposite way in which it was charged. So if this were positive and this were minus, now this would be minus and that would be positive. But I suppose in this case it would be because the HP positive is coming from here. So this splits off and it goes to high voltage standby and HV positive and then that HP positive is felt through NTC1 uh, to this or no when the relay is activated when power factor correction begins this relay right here it receives a signal through the windings of the inductor back around to IC41 so ZCD that looks like the signal that actually allows the relay to enable or to activate because it's ground, I guess. Or HV negative. I'm assuming that, yeah, that's probably, that's like a ground, I guess. Or no. No. VDD SW2 is what engages the relay. Anyhow, the relay is working. The relay works and allows HV positive to be felt uh, at the coil. And because this diode this is the anode and this is the cathode, then that means that current would be able to flow in this direction. So you'd have positive, negative, positive, negative. And this feedback loop is good. I've checked these, these resistors here. They're not open. I mean, I read them in circuit, so they weren't 2.7 meg. They were like 1.4 or whatever, but But if I took them out of circuit, they'd probably measure properly. suppose I could do that just to verify. Unless Q5 is unable to keep up. I don't know. I'm going to have to ponder this, y'all. I'll be back. All right, so I removed um, a couple of these 2.7 mega ohm resistors. And I measured the resistance. And it was, it was 2.6 mega ohm so that uh, that checks out pretty well 
but if we go here now I don't know if this is going to do this again but we're going to try it again I'm going to turn the console on and notice you didn't hear the, the relay click that means that the 12 volts is on and I didn't unplug it so let's uh, let's measure across this capacitor see how much we have okay it just cut off why is that voltage climbing up so high man I don't know what's going on dude I don't know what's going on that voltage got it way too high way too high it shouldn't get that high I did something wrong yeah I think it's completely dead now this is this is quite confusing y'all I don't know if I broke the feedback something I did with the feedback I'll switch over to the microscope something I did I disconnected uh, I disconnected that 2.7 ohm and then I tried to turn it on with uh, with the feedback path open I removed I completely removed this and um, and tried to tried to turn it on without that resistor on so I opened the feedback path uh, and it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything at that point um, so then I I resoldered this uh, 2.7 meg resistor and then I turned it on and I measured voltage and I was getting 411 volts like I was supposed to but then I just checked while ago and it was up to like 400 and something I don't know dudes I do not know this is confusing this is confusing I know that's on there let's measure the resistance here what do we get Oh, you know what? That resistor is open now. I think I may have torn that resistor up. Yeah, I think I opened that resistor. No, it's not open. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. So now, if I measure across these these resistors now do I get a resistance 2.6 uh, meg and the other one is also 2.6 meg and the one I removed is 2.6 meg so Alright, I soldered it back on there. Now I'm reading 7 point something meg across those capacitors. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow myself up, I think, if I keep messing around with this thing. So let's plug it back in. Alright, I didn't hear a click. Alright, it cut on. It did not cut off. Let's measure voltage across the big cap. Four hundred and five volts. Let's measure it again. Four hundred and five point two volts. So it's staying steady at four hundred and five volts. Let's check again. Four hundred and five volts. See, that's what it's supposed to read. Let's turn it off. Relay clicks off. Let's wait for a second. Let's turn it back on. It did not turn back off. 
Let's measure voltage. 405.3 volts. Let's turn it off. Let's unplug it. Let's discharge the capacitor. Capacitor is discharged. Let's desolder the wires. Okay, let's put it back in its case. All right, power supply is plugged in. Let's plug it in. Plug in our HDMI, because I'm confident that this is going to work. Alright. Will it stay on? Let's switch over to scene two. And lo and behold, we have fixed the power supply. So there you have it. So, so what was wrong? The only thing I did to fix it was I removed those feedback capacitors and I'll show you which ones I'm talking about. Uh, I'll show you again. I removed two of these just because I wanted to check and see um, if they were in fact reading 2.7 meg um, and they were but when I reinstalled the second one and cut the power supply on, I noticed then that I had a change in my power factor correction voltage it was at 400 and something volts so I'm guessing what happened was at some point this console was dropped and it loosened or, or, or maybe cracked a solder joint or something along those lines. Um, because when I put it back on there, I went from reading 1.4 mega ohms across any one of those three resistors that are in series to reading 7.6 ohms, which is, which is a more accurate representation of three 2.7 mega ohm resistors in series. So ultimately um, I got lucky but we did narrow it down to the power factor correction part of the power supply being faulty just by measuring and noticing that our voltage never got above 330 volts DC which it should get up to you now see 405 volts DC so so yeah ma'am so I am pretty happy with what I have learned about power supplies I understand them much much better and I feel pretty confident that I could probably fix any of the power supplies that I ever get that, that need to be repaired it would be helpful to have an isolation transformer and a load so that I could uh not have to worry about plugging it into the game console to test it, but um, all in all, I'd say uh, I learned a lot. I mean, I learned a tremendous amount just by thinking. I'd look at the power supply, look at the schematic, and think, you know, and you start to kind of see the paths. I don't know everything, but I'm sure if I fix another four or five of these with different faults, I'll be a whole lot more knowledgeable than I currently am. So, anyhow, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully, you learned something. If you have any questions, uh, put them down in the comments, and I'm sure somebody will come by. And if I can't help you, somebody else will be able to help you. So, anyhow, y'all be good.